Well, 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 darlings, have I got to tell for you. Picture this, it's 1982 and the feminist movement has its claws out, ready to tear apart stereotypes and shake up the world of cinema. But what happens when a group of fierce women decide to dip their toes into the blood-soaked water of the slash genre? Well, you get Slumber Party Massacre, the film that equals part scream and satire. But be on the lookout for an uninvited guest. Now let's talk about the brains behind this bloody operation. Rita Mae Brown, a proud lesbian and warrior for both the lesbian and feminist movements, originally penned this script as a parody of slasher films. It was supposed to be a tongue-in-cheek, a bit of wink, and nod to the absurdity of the genre. But as fate would have it, her script ended up in the hands of Amy Jones Holden, a film editor with a serious itch to direct. Jones was on the brink of editing one of the biggest blockbusters of all time, E.T., but she had a dream, darlings. She didn't want to spend her life cutting up someone else's vision. So she walked away from Spielberg and E.T. to take a chance on a little slasher film with a tiny budget and big potential. Enter Roger Corman, the king of exploitation cinema. When Jones showed up with a short reel, she shot for $1,000. He saw something special. He handed her a $200,000 budget and said, go make your movie. And just like that, Jones was in the director's chair, rewriting Brown's script and bringing Slumber Party Massacre to life. But here's where it gets juicy, my loves. The movie was supposed to be a parody, but by the time it hit the screen, it was a full-blown slasher with just a hint of satire. Some say the parody was lost, while others see it as a clever mix of horror and humor. Please, please. When the pizza arrives, things really start jumping. Either way, the result was something no one expected. A feminist taking on the slasher genre with all blood, guts, and um, shower scenes you could ask for. Critics were split. Some saw it as just another slasher flick, while others noticed that there was something deeper going on. Janet Muslin from the New York Times caught the wink, pointing out the feminist symbolism in one scene where a woman breaks the killer's drill in half get it a little bit of girl power in the midst of all the gore the movie wasn't a blockbuster but it found its audience especially those who appreciate a little camp with their carnage over the years it becomes a cult classic spawning sequels and even a modern reimagining and for amy jones it was a ticket out of the editing room and into the director's chair where she proved she could handle both the scares and the satire so my darlings, the next time you settle into a slumber party of your own, maybe with some popcorn and a few close friends, remember the women who dared to make a slasher film with a twist and maybe just, maybe, keep an eye out for power drills. You never know what's lurking in the dark. Until next time, my pretty kittens, stay sharp, stay sassy, and keep those calls ready. Meow. Who's your daddy?